gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, I got two things I need to talk to you about, if you guys don't mind. First, I am completely astounded. That's right, I used the word astounded. Can you believe it? Anyway, by this particular program. Now, I'm going to let this play in the background. And this is... I don't think this is the one I want to play. I think this is the one I want to play. No, we're going to play this one. It's technically the same voice, but it's a different rhythm. And I'm downloading this. Oh, you know what? I can't play it. I gotta stop it. I gotta stop it. I downloaded the wrong song. Lord have mercy. No, I have to make it into one. And that's the problem. I have to wait for it to finish. The finish. Um, I just put these words together. Now, let me tell you what I'm doing. And I'm gonna hope that some of you guys do the same thing. I'll show you in a second. Let's get this right here. And then we're gonna talk about what I wanted to talk about, if you guys don't mind. The first thing I'm doing is... I'm creating a song. It allows you to, to go here or here and click continue from this song. So once you hit continue, you get to reword or generate lyrics. So what I did is I created the first lyrics, I let it reword it, and then I changed some of the words, such as empty hollow chambers, echoes without sound, a puzzled missing piece veil, truth nowhere to be found, whispers in the stormy shadows where memories deceive, the weight of choice made, choices made, and the burden, bad path taken, we receive. I added other words to it to give it more of a poet poetic meaning. And because of the way she's singing, I think it's going to go perfect. I haven't heard it yet. That's what I was just getting ready to play. But I want to play the whole thing because if you understand, this is going to be a six-minute long song. If you understand what's going on, ladies and gentlemen, then you'll understand that by putting this all together as one, I'm creating art! I mean, um, that's exactly what I'm doing. It's not creating it. I'm creating it. I'm telling it what to do. It's not telling me what to do. It's coming up with some of the lamest, dumbest words on this planet. Some of the most obvious words. That's why I don't like AI. AI, the way they program this is to come up with basic, rudimentary, ignorant things. Okay? I don't want that. Sorry, my phone is letting me know that I tried calling some people and they didn't answer. And so I'm telling my phone, I don't want to know. I don't care they didn't answer. I don't want to talk to them. Anyway. All right. Anyway. Um, let's, uh, I have to check something. Okay, that was just Amazon letting me know that there was going to be a delay in the delivery. I had a delivery coming today. Well, I have a delivery coming today. The driver says he's running a little bit late, but it's a refrigerator, and I need it. It's a larger refrigerator than the one I just had that I'm sending back to Walmart. But let's go ahead and talk. Now, you see, that's still... Oh, that has finished. Okay, let me show you why it has finished. Okay, that's how I know it has finished. But I'm not going to be worried about that one. What I want is this one. We're going to play this one first. It's only a minute. Okay. That's the first one. And this is the second one. So I told you it was finished. But this is the one I want. That one right there. It's just the way it's done. And so we do... Get the whole song! Okay. Come together now, all together, come together now, all together, come together now. Now that's one, and then I'm going to do this one, get the whole song too. Even though they are saying the same words, it's being sung differently. And for me, that works. We don't want continue, we want the whole song. Alright, so, let's talk. Ladies and gentlemen, there was a young lady who, and it's not her fault, misunderstood data mass and if she misunderstood data mass and she was very disappointed and upset because she had the wrong idea 
Data Mass is not there to find EIN numbers for you all. They're not there to do all of your tax filings. No, 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 no. <laughs> That's a tax preparer. Data Mass are not tax preparers. They're not CPAs. They never purport to be. They never claim to be. What Data Mass is, is an organization that will file your taxes, everyone. Go ahead. Use your CPAs. Use your tax regular tax preparers. Let them file your taxes. Data Mass will do the amended filings for you. Hey, there you go. You see how that works? That's easier said than done, isn't it? Data Mass will do the amended filing, so go ahead and file your taxes the normal way you normally will. Data Mass will do the amended filing, adding your credits, the ones that your tax preparers won't add. That way there's no confusion. Because if you were to do Data Mass first, and then, pay attention, and then go to the tax preparer, you'd have too many questions to answer. It'll be back and forth, and it'll take too long. Whereas if you let them file your taxes, and the moment they finish the paperwork, pay attention, don't wait to get the return. The moment they finish the paperwork, then you go to data mass. Doesn't matter whether you get a refund or not. Pay attention. Doesn't matter whether you get a refund or not. Then you go to data mass and you refile, adding in the appropriate information with the appropriate forms. That way we don't have to worry about, pay attention, some people, well, do you have to use this form? No, you, don't, you won't have to use that at all. That's what Data Mass is doing for you, okay? We're going to talk about this again because I don't feel like cutting this video off. Um, I got some things that I need to get off my chest, <laughs> get off my back. Anyway, watch this. I'm going to play this now in my background. Okay, this is 5 minutes and 54 seconds long, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm going to turn down the volume because it, it is kind of loud. And no, it ain't that loud right now. I did turn it down. You hear that? You see, you can barely hear it. Okay. Now, this is the whole song, so you're not going to see the lyrics here. You're going to see the lyrics here. I don't know how to make that larger. Oh, I guess it's not going to give us the the all the lyrics. Oh, well. And I don't know if it would anyway if I had the video. But I do know we're going to download. This is the one I want to download. Because I'm proud of this. Okay, it's just the way it's being done. Okay, just the way it's being done. Okay. <coughs> now, while that's playing in the background, let me go ahead and explain something. Like I said, the fact that some people have misunderstood is not their fault. That's why we started the organization a month ago. We did a soft start because we needed to get rid of the confusion. That's how we know what the confusion is. That's why no company ever just starts and, you know, that's it. Uh, you'll hear companies do what's called a soft start or soft opening, and then they'll do the main opening. Because we needed to see where the confusion was, what people would get from the conversation. We were able to get that from you all. Now, let me tell you, I did a consult today with a young man. And it was one of those, I actually liked the consult. This one would have ended on time. Okay. Sorry about that. This one would have ended on time, but because we had covered everything. But I asked him because I told him I'm not in a rush. We had time. We covered quite a few things, but his was more succinct than most of you because he, in my opinion, he doesn't think this about himself, but he's a little bit more advanced than the rest of you guys. Now, he doesn't think this. If you were to ask him, he would tell you, well, he doesn't know much, and that's a lie. I've read his paperwork, <laughs> the stuff that he's used in the past, and he definitely has a handle on things that other people don't have a handle on, and he doesn't realize that. So I give him credit for being humble without being humble. He wasn't trying to be humble. He was just being honest because he perceives that he doesn't have the answers. He doesn't have everything, but we were able to get him to understand that what he has, if he combines it with what we talked about today, Lord have mercy. Ladies and gentlemen, I 
told him, no, this is, this is not what I did for him, but I told him, I said, I'm going to show you how I'm set up. Now, I want you all to pay attention. I'm going to show him how I'm set up. Because people are wondering, what, what am I doing? Ladies and gentlemen, I already established all the paperwork. I already established everything. <laughs> Why do you think they won't let me in their stupid court? <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Look, I know that I've done what I needed to do. Like I said, this last trip, I could have had that over with. I just had to say a couple of things on the record, and I chose, well, the understanding was to keep my mouth shut. It was an under. I call it an understanding. And it could only work out that way. Keep your mouth shut. Don't say anything. And I did that, ladies and gentlemen. I remained silent throughout the whole trial. Now, that helped me prove something as well. See, remember, you end up testifying against yourself. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. They let you know that that is an offer, and you accept that offer by continuing to talk. Do you understand? You guys need to tell the officer when he pulls you over, no, I don't accept your offer. Literally. The first words that come out of your mouth is, no, I don't accept your offer. And he'll look at you, what offer are you talking about? Well, you're trying to contract with me, and I don't accept your offer. Well, I don't, no, no, no. Well, so long as you're not, trying to, you're not trying to contract with me, okay, then we can talk. But if you're trying to contract with me, then I don't accept your offer. I'm sorry I didn't tell you guys that. Everything is contract. Everything is offer and acceptance, ladies and gentlemen. Everything is offer and acceptance, ladies and gentlemen. Everything is offer and acceptance, ladies and gentlemen. So, I'm glad that some of you understand. Do you guys hear this song in the background? All AI. Well, all me, but you know, AI helped. <laughs> okay? And I like it. I've been listening to it on and off all day. I don't mind having this type of music around me, ladies and gentlemen. I know the words. I ain't got to worry about somebody putting in... I ain't got to worry about somebody putting in something that bothers my conscience. Because I'm grateful that I have a conscience. I'm grateful that I'm bothered by certain things. But let's get back to talking to you guys about what we're getting ready to do. I could continue the song, but I'm not going to. I'm going to let the song stop there. Just, and I'll, I'll use, it's called Acid. Sony Acid, I have Sony Acid number 11. But I'm going to use Sony Acid, and I'm going to shorten that. I'm going to let it crescendo. I'm going to let it fade out. Okay? So that's going to be one of the songs. I'm going to do it with all of the songs that I'm keeping. That's why I'm downloading them. Now, that's that one. This is the other version. Now, I like this one at first, but that one grew on me, the second one. Okay? This one's a little bit more up-tempo. Not too much, but it's enough. Same voice, but a little bit more up-tempo. All right, ladies and gentlemen. We're getting ready to help you guys do what I do. I have a non-profit faith-based organization as a matter of fact let's do this ladies and gentlemen let me let you guys see what congress said hold on i don't want that stuff i'm looking for something in particular so you guys have to excuse me i'm looking for the definition of religion because it's important so, let's do this right here. Defining religion. I think scholarship would do it. But I'm looking for, not that one, Lord have mercy. Customs and Border, that's the one I want, ladies and gentlemen. They give, in my opinion, it comes from the Civil Rights Act of 1864. Didn't know it, 
did not know it, but I think it's the most perfect definition out of all the definitions. You're going to go to Customs Borders, well, you're going to type in what is, in parentheses, or quotation, excuse me, religion, under Title Seven. Notice what it says. Title Seven of the Civil Rights Act, I got to turn you down, young lady. Civil Rights Act of 1864 protects all aspects of religious observance and practices as well as belief and defines religion very broadly for the purpose of determining what the law covers. For the purpose of Title VII, religion includes not only traditional organized religions such as Christianity, Judaism, Islam, Hinduism, Buddhism, but also religious beliefs that are new, uncommon, not part of the formal church or sect, only subscribed to by a small number of people or that seems illogical or unreasonable to others. Ladies and gentlemen, you have the right to believe in whatever you want to believe in. Nobody can tell you what to believe in. So if you want to start a faith-based organization, if you believe that the sidewalk is made out of cement, that is your belief. Nobody can take that belief away from you. It says belief. Any belief, ladies and gentlemen. See, as well as belief. Any belief. You can believe that you could fly. Okay? It's okay that you believe that you can fly. Some people believe that they will die. You can believe in whatever you want to believe and thereby create your own faith-based organization. Not religion. We're not talking about religion. People don't understand. Pay attention so that you get it. All aspects of religious observance and practice as well as belief. As well as that makes it separate. Beliefs are separate from religion everybody see but also religious beliefs everybody has been taught that what do you believe whenever i ask people what they believe they always start talking about god I said i didn't ask you if you believe in god i said what do you believe i didn't say what do you believe in do you understand so if you believe in a god that's your choice see recognize that individuals beliefs or practice or if a few if no other person adheres to it okay you have the right to believe in whatever you want to believe you see as one of jehovah's witnesses i'm not allowed to have interface i'm not allowed to practice two faiths i'm not allowed to be a jehovah's witness and then let's say be a catholic or be a baptist or be a buddhist i'm not allowed to practice interfaith because the bible says no it says don't do it and you know what I appreciate the fact the Bible says don't do it. Look, Jesus made it quite clear. You can't serve two masters. You'll love one or hate the other. So how can you be a part of two things? But in nowhere in the scriptures does it tell me that I can't have my own belief. Now, I'm not talking about belief in God or his word or following him or doing what his son says. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about, you know what I believe? I believe that I don't have to worry about tomorrow. I really honestly believe that. I believe that all I have to do is focus on 12 midnight tonight. So when things get very rough for me, very bad, horrible, and that hasn't happened in a long time, but when they get that bad, I just worry about midnight. Because as long as I make it to midnight, tomorrow never ever comes. So I never have to worry about tomorrow. Do you understand? Do you hear her? Okay, that's that's my girl, y'all. I like that song. All right, so we're going to help you guys do the same thing. See, the person said they didn't want to pay taxes. Now, you guys heard me. I don't want y'all running from taxes. I want you to pay taxes. Say what? I want you to pay taxes. But no, 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 no. You're not going to pay taxes with your heart, sweat, and tears. Oh, no, you're going to pay taxes with tax credits because that's what the credits are for is to offset your tax liability. You guys don't know that? That's what credits are for, is to offset your taxes. I want you to pay your taxes with your credits so that you get a larger refund. You have to do the research. Don't come to me. See, that was the problem. The person listened to the videos and they heard what they heard, but they didn't hear everything. I can't tell you everything because I don't have enough time to tell you everything. Those of you who've been listening to my videos, some people have been telling me about binge watching these videos of mine. Lord have mercy, don't do that to yourself, you end up crazy. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, 
it's a lot of information coming from one person. I've done over almost 16,000 videos on YouTube since 2010. Now tell me, who else has done that? 16,000 videos on YouTube by one person? All talking about various subjects? And not getting paid for a single one? Ever, 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 ever. Ladies and gentlemen, what I'm trying to tell you is I don't do this for that. I do this for you. So we're going to do this one again. I'm sorry. I, like I said, this is the one I liked at the beginning. But I'm keeping both of them. You see, that I did the second one. I haven't done this one. So we do this one and we go, where my download? There my download. Download. And it'll pop up right over here. See that right there? This one will be, oh no. Well, they're the same. They're the same. Um amount because they're going to be the same amount that just means i downloaded both of them both of them all right ladies and gentlemen we're not going to do everything i've done not for you because you guys don't need everything that i've done but you do need your faith-based organization it's called a faith-based organization fbo you do need your fbo you need your 508 or 509 trust now, the 508-509 Trust, we can create that for you. You'll have to add in all your other information because it's just going to be the micro trust. And all you'll have, if you already have a trust, you'll already have your main trust. I would strongly suggest that you take the micro trust when we set up this program. This will be a SATCOM program. Okay? This will be a SATCOM program. When we set up the micro trust, all you'll do is set, take the micro trust and create the master trust. What is the master trust? Well, it's the same as the micro trust. Here's what happens with the master trust. The master trust, you are the grantor of the master trust. Okay? The trustee of the master trust is the micro trust. <laughs> okay? And the beneficiary of both trusts are you. The micro trust, you're the beneficiary, pay attention, and the trustee of the micro trust. Now, hold on. I thought you just said the micro trust is the trustee. You can't be the grantor, the trustee, and the beneficiary all at the same time. But you're not. You are the trustee of the micro trust. The micro trust itself has the capacity as trustee. But it's not you. You are not the micro trust. The micro trust is the trustee of the master trust. You are the trustee of the micro trust and the beneficiary of the micro trust, but not the grantor of the micro trust. The grantor of the micro trust is the master trust. Do you see the conundrum? That's what we're going to do for you. Hello? Oh, let me help you guys out. I've been trying to explain to something, something to someone. So let's do this now. Let's have this conversation while I'm here, while it's on my mind. Sorry, give me one second. I know it sounds like it's religious, doesn't it? But it's not religious. It has nothing to do with religion. The, let me show you the title. Sinister! The title is Do You Not Realize That Things Will Never Be The Same? That's the name of the song. See, people don't realize we can never go back to the 80s. We can never go back to the 90s. We can never go back, ladies and gentlemen. We can't go back to the way it used to be. We can't go back to the way it used to be before 9-11. We can't go back to the way it used to be before COVID. Ladies and gentlemen, we cannot go back. We are stuck. You know, there, there are people who talk about going back in time and in movies, and all of a sudden they're stuck. They can't go back any further than a certain day. And then if they let time go to a certain point, they can't go back beyond that time. You guys know the type of movies I'm talking about. Well, we're stuck. We can't go back. I mean, we can't even, do you guys remember the early 2000s, the early 90s? Do you remember the 80s? But you can barely remember it, right? No, trust me, you can barely remember it, can't you? It's like it's a dream or something, like it never happened. Ladies and gentlemen, we cannot go back. Do you not realize? That's the name of the song. That's what it's about, okay? That's how that song got started. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to talk about certificate. What is a certificate? It says it's an official document. 
<laughs> Sorry, that's a joke. It says it's an official document. That's a joke, ladies and gentlemen. A document attesting ownership of a certain item. A testing ownership, a stock certificate, a test ownership of the stock, a graduation certificate, a test ownership of graduating. Do you understand, ladies and gentlemen? A certificate, of, uh, a level of achievement in a course of training or study. A person's birth, marriage, or death, it's a document. They said a certificate is a document. Now, they're right about that, a certificate is a document. But I didn't ask it, was a certificate a document? I said, what is a certificate? A certificate is not a document. You know what a certificate is? Oh, I'm sorry, let's do this. Okay, let's do l l Latin, late English. In the sense of certification and attestation, okay, from French, certificate, or medieval Latin, certificatum, certificatum and certificar. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's do this definition. Let's do the legal definition. Now, you know what it's not saying? Oh, wait a minute. This is Black's Law. Let's see what you got to say, Black. Homie, what up? This is not going to be the correct answer either, ladies and gentlemen. But let's read it. A written assurance or an official representation. Pay attention to that word, representation. Pay attention to the word, representation. That some act has or has not been done or some event occurred or some legal formality has been complied with. Now, see, remember... The has or has not been occurred or has or has not been complied with. That's the continuation. That's why they did it that way. Particularly, such written assurance made or issued from some court and designed as a notice of things done herein or as a warrant or authority of uh, to some other court. Judge, officer, people versus foster. But we don't care about people versus foster. They don't give us a definition of certificate. It says a document used in the English customs house, no goods can be exported by certificate, except foreign goods formally imported, on which the whole or part of the custom paid on importation is to be drawn back. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is not an English word. Now, it derives from Latin. French is deriv a derivative of Latin, so it derives from Latin. Get get the word. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the word we need to hold on to because the certificate is just a representation. I'm going to show you in a minute. Representation. In contracts, a statement made. No, I don't want in contracts. Collateral. A statement, either in writing. Nope, don't want that one. Circumstance. Nope, don't want that one. Allegations. Preliminary. Don't want that. Contract of insurance. Implication. Protection, distribution, pure stripe, uh-uh, Scots law and Scotch law. The name of a plea or statement presented to a lord ordinary of the court of session, not in session, of session, when his judgment is brought under review. It's a certificate. He gets served with a certificate. Ladies and gentlemen. Oh, I'm sorry. It's the representation, ladies and gentlemen. A certificate is a representation. It's not the actual. Okay, let's do it this way so you guys can see where I'm going with this. Let's go to chat. Chat, 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 chat. Wake up. Why is it that the definition for certificate says that it's prima facie evidence or a representation? Question mark. How could that be? Question mark. Stop listening. Now, ladies and gentlemen, before he gives me the answer, a certificate is not the actual. It's not the factual. It's a copy. It's a representation, a replica. It's not the original. Pay attention. It's not the original. Pay attention. It's not the original. 
I got to say that because a lot of people think that their birth certificate is something of value. Your birth certificate, certificate, your birth certificate, certificate is only <laughs> prima facie. It's not the original, people. It's a copy. That's why you can go and get 120, 30, 50,000 copies. It's not original. The reason why I'm saying this is because somebody uh, sent me a recording of a young lady who said that she deposited her certificate. Now, I'm not speaking on the lady. I'm not rising on the young lady. But she said she deposited her certificate. Give me a second. This didn't do certificate. Give me a second. I don't know why he want to be so difficult. You know what? That don't make no sense. Hold on. Y'all, oh, that don't make no sense. I got to do all this just to... Where you at, chat? Uh-uh. There we go, all the way at the top. Wake up. Why is it that a certificate is only prima facie evidence of the original document? Question mark. Why isn't it that a certificate is not the original? Question mark. Just a representation or a facsimile? Question mark. Stop listening. Stop listening. I say this for those people who are getting their birth certificate authenticated. Now, I'm going to explain the birth certificate thing in just a second. Getting it authenticated is not bad, but it's it doesn't have the effect that you thought it had. Hold on now. I'll show it to you in a moment. Let's see what he has to say. Yes, I asked the questions a specific way other than the way I asked it the first time. So I'm going to let him explain to you about a certificate. Anything called a certificate is not the original. It's not authentic. A certificate is considered prima facie evidence of the original document primarily because it serves as an initial piece of evidence that an underlying document or fact exists without necessarily being the definitive proof itself. The term prima facie is Latin for at first sight. Oh man, I thought that was you! At face value, supports the existence or validity of something, but its authenticity or the truth of the information it contains can be further questioned or verified. The reason a certificate is not the original, but rather a representation or a facsimile, lies in the practical and legal necessity to maintain and protect the integrity of the original document. Original documents especially those of legal, historical, or personal significance, are often stored securely to prevent them from being tampered with, lost, or damaged. Certificates provide a practical means to use and reference the information contained in the original document without exposing the original to risks associated with frequent handling or verification processes. Moreover, certificates often serve specific legal or administrative purposes, such as proving the occurrence of an event, e.g. birth, marriage or death, or the status of an individual, e.g. citizenship or qualification, without requiring the original document to be presented each time proof is needed. This allows for a more efficient handling of processes where documentation is required, reducing the burden on both the holders of the original documents and the entities requesting verification. In legal context, while a certificate may be accepted as prima facie evidence, Parties to a proceeding may challenge the accuracy or authenticity of the certificate, in which case further evidence or the production of the original document might be required to establish the truth of the matter asserted by the certificate. Ladies and gentlemen, as I was trying to explain, the young lady who they sent me the audio saying that she had deposited her birth certificate with a stockbroker and he accepted it. Please understand. You can deposit anything with anyone. Just deliver it to them. But if it's a security, and if it's a security, pay attention, if it's a security that you have rights to, pay attention, then where is the paperwork? Showing the value of the security, showing the percentage of the trade of its stock, 
value on the market. Where's the paperwork? There was no mention of any of this. But if you're going to be delivering a document to a broker to be traded for you, you better believe there's going to be some paperwork that you have to sign and some paperwork he has to sign because he's taking money. Because certificates that are converted into stock are valuable, ladies and gentlemen. They're, they're, they're money. <sighs> I hope some of you understand what I'm trying to say here. There have been people who have been talking about authenticating birth certificate and I told him you can't authenticate a birth certificate why because well as you see it's not the original that's the first reason now the original certificate is the birth record the record is the original document the certificate is just everything combined into one document everybody think it's no it's the live birth no it's still called that's still called a certificate people it's the birth record that's the original the entire record the record people you need to understand Whew, so glad I got that out ah <sighs> you see their fingerprints footprints and blood tests that are taken that's the record where they documented all of that that's proof and then pay attention there is a security that was created as a result of all of that now that security well hold on it's not a certificate. We don't know the official name for it. They haven't told us. We just know that it is called the birth record. Now these people have been getting their birth certificates authenticated. A birth certificate is only prima facie evidence of the original. Pay attention, it's a certificate. That's why you get copies of it. You can get as many copies as you want. It's not the original document, people. It has a seal on it. So that still doesn't make it an original. Oh, wait, 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 hold on now. Here's where you might have them it has a serial number on it cornflakes anybody and because it has a unique serial number on it pay attention that item is its own security but it's not backed by anything because they didn't back it by anything they just gave it to you and you have no evidence that they backed it by anything so why don't you back it by something Go ahead. Why don't you back it by something? Tax credits, make it property of your trust when you create your trust. Why don't you back it by something? If you were to do that, then you can create value for your certificate. But people were going and getting their birth certificate authenticated in Washington, D.C. And when they were getting their birth certificate authenticated, ladies and gentlemen, I was saying, people, that is... It's already got three seals on it. What are you getting authenticated about it? But you don't, I told them the best you're doing is creating a security. Said you're creating a security. Pay attention, you who've gotten your birth certificates authenticated. You created an official new document that has nothing but seals on it. Ladies and gentlemen, learn how to create a security. Learn how to create a security. Security, security, get, get them out of here. Yeah, they don't know what they're doing. Ladies and gentlemen, learn how to create a security. Learn what it takes to create a security and then convert your authenticated birth certificates to securities. Now you can start depositing things. If you can back it with something of value. Now you can start authenticating things. If you can back it with something of value. Ladies and gentlemen, I just realized I'm going to have to call my neighbor over to help me bring this refrigerator in when the guy gets here. No, I'm not going to have the guy bring it in. He's had a long day. But I called my neighbor and have him bring that thing all up in here because he was supposed to help me. And I told him I'd call him when it was time to help me. So I'm going to call him and get him to come on in here and help me. That, that there is what I'm saying. All right, let's get back to explaining how things are going to be. We'll create that program. I have to talk to the staff about it because we just, I just thought about it today. So giving you guys a trust, and this trust comes with a corporation, your corporation, your nonprofit, <laughs> religious, no, faith-based organization. In your all caps name. You can name it whatever you want, but I'm going to suggest you put it in your all caps name. You need to trust me on this one. 
then you're going to open up a bank account in that all caps name. Say what? You heard what I said. You're going to open up a bank account in that all caps name. Why, why would you do that? Oh, ladies and gentlemen, I keep trying to tell y'all, y'all should be doing all your business in that all caps name. You should be getting credit cards and everything else. Everything should be done in that all caps name. Even when you go to court. Hey, you're talking about my corporation. Y'all need to, my, no, my corporation, no, that's well protected. Oh, wait till y'all see the trust and how the trust is set up. And what conundrum they walk in through when they have a trust. See, when I did the consult, I was telling this to the young man. And then I said, I'm going to tell you to do a couple of things that not even I have done. That's what we're going to be adding to the trust. And literally things that I have not done. Things that I didn't have to do, but if I had done it, it would have made my trust more solidified. But these trusts are irrevocable, irrevocable. They have to be in order for them to be valid. They have to be. If it's not irrevocable, what they can do is they can come and destroy your trust. And you don't want that. So, ladies and gentlemen, by establishing your trust and setting up your trust the right way, you're protected. Because you can protect yourself within your trust. Then, we won't provide the registration of your trust, because you can register your trust. We will tell you the state, the best state for registration of your trust. Okay, but we will create the trust for you, and we will create... Well, set up the corporation. You've already created the corporation, but we will get you the specific, specific EIN number for that corporation. And we will set up the religious organization. Now, it's going to be called a religious organization when we register it with the state. And I think the annual fee is like $20 or $25 or so. Once you establish it, Okay, it's just the work that goes into setting up, because I, I have to write the stupid, oh, excuse me, <laughs> I have to write the trust. The last trust took me four weeks. The micro trust that everybody got, look, that was, you guys don't understand, and the people who had the program don't understand. Everybody who got into the secure and one's property program received a micro trust, and they don't even realize the value of that. Do you know how much companies charge you to create a trust for you? And we created a micro trust for you that gives you all the protection, gives you all the control of the micro trust. You have all of the control of your own micro trust. The only thing is for your protection, the micro trust is under the main trust, which cannot interfere with your control because you're the trustee and the beneficiary, and it's just a grantor. It can't do anything. It can't take nothing. It cannot assume no control of your property. It cannot steal your property. Because it's not designed that way. That's why you're the trustee. Lord have mercy. We try to get people to understand that, but some people, no, because I don't want to, y'all th trying, trying to get over, y'all trying to scam me. Lord have mercy. But we can't help those people who think that. Because nobody had done this before. We're about to do that for you guys on a regular basis. And give you your own, give you your own corporation. Okay, sorry, it, it can't be cheap because it comes with the trust and the corporation. Well, the corporation, we're just going to charge you the fees they charge you. It's the trust that you're going to get charged. So we're going to charge you the fees they charge you, and then there's going to be the processing fee because the fees they charge you also incorporates the person who has to do the work because I'm not doing the work. I'm not registering your company. I'm not setting everything up. There is somebody we have who does that. I am not doing that. Because I don't have the time, people. I really don't. I don't wish I had the time. I really don't. I don't wish I had the time. But I don't have the time. I started this video this afternoon because after doing that consult, and I was very proud of that consult. We, uh, it's been like seven weeks since he first paid, and he had a death in the family. And so I told him, no, 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 you're not in the right mindset to have your consult now. No, we'll wait. And then too many weeks went by because I asked him, I said, everything all right? And he said, everything was fine. And I said, well, you need to schedule. And he says, okay. And three more weeks went by. <laughs> and so I finally said, look, we need to get this going because you're really affecting my accounting. 
I, I can't have any consults. I still have two people who were supposed to do their consults and never did, and they really don't know how much they're bothering me with that. But that's okay. We have people who, you guys don't understand how many people come to me to help with their companies and everything. You know what would happen if they came to me and told me what they were doing and that they just needed some help? Then we could just have a real consult about that. But they come to me with the subterfuge and they're not getting the information they deserve to get. But if they came to me and say, look, this is what we're doing and we're trying to do this. I had people who came and worked for SACOM, applied for SACOM to get extra information to figure out how to do this, how to do that. What the? Why didn't you just schedule a consult and just ask for the information? As long as not, it's not in competition with SACOM. In other words, as long as it doesn't involve proprietary information, and as long as you're not directly in competition with SACOM, then you can be helped. Lord have mercy. But people are doing all this subterfuge, this, this deceit. Ladies and gentlemen, do you know that when you're untruthful, that follows you? Because other people will be untruthful with you? Can I say it? Go ahead, honey. Lord, have mercy. L Lord, have mercy, he said, y'all. Lord, have mercy. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to thank all of you for indulging me, talking about certificates and what they really are ladies and gentlemen you have the birth certificate if you want to go get an extra birth certificate then when you get your credits the 1099c credits when you get that assign the credits assign not transfer assign the credits to the trust as collateral for the trust remember they're dollar for dollar no, the IRS, I don't care what the IRS says. They're currencies of the United States. And because they're currencies of the United States, every dollar has equal value. So they are dollar for dollar. I don't care what the IRS says about that. That's what the law says. The IRS doesn't write the law. They just write the songs. Okay. Yeah, that's what I wrote. People's attitudes have evaporated. And there's nothing to fear but tell them. If you talk to the rulers, ladies and gentlemen, the ones who are in charge, the elite, they tell you that they're trying to the population reduction. Ain't that something, huh? That's what I said. We can never go back, ladies and gentlemen. That's why this song, I like the way it did it. I like this software, ladies and gentlemen, because all I had to do, oh, two less lonely people in the world, yeah, two less lonely people in the world, something finally went right, that's why she said two less lonely people, because I was thinking of that song when I wrote that, so, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not going to keep you guys any longer, I am grateful that you allowed me to talk about birth certificates, and to finally get everybody to see that they need to start creating their own securities. They're called private securities. Pay attention. Do your research on private securities. Do yourself a favor, ladies and gentlemen. Create a security according to the March 9, 1933 Act. March 9, 1933 was prior to the Securities and Exchange Act. 1934 and 1935 which means they don't apply private securities under the March 1933 Act the regulations were less stringent do your research people don't say I never did anything for you you guys look they're about to change the monetary system so let them change the monetary system you want your stuff to be dollar for dollar that's how you survive Look, don't say I ain't said nothing. I ain't told you nothing. I ain't did nothing for you. Because you'll be alive. And we don't want none of y'all to be alive. Okay? So stop lying. Alright. Hey, I gotta go. Y'all take care. And thank you again, ladies and gentlemen, for giving me the time. Goodbye.